What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Sideline NFL Week 5. We're going to be getting into every game. Going to give you my biggest takeaways, quick hitters. But before we do that, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let's get into my biggest takeaways from Week 5 of the NFL season. My biggest takeaway, Josh Allen is playing better than anyone in the league right now. He should be the front runner for MVP he had some throws yesterday against the Pittsburgh Steelers that I haven't seen any quarterback make in a long time. The, the flick of his wrist, he's thrown at 98 yards to Gabe Davis, 300 yards at halftime. He's just on another level. He's carrying the Bills. I think he should be the MVP favorite. I think the Bills should be the Super Bowl favorite. And it's all because of Josh Allen. He's a cannon, and it seems like he's put it all together. Josh Allen is playing better than any quarterback in the league right now. My second takeaway, the Cowboys defense is deadly. They are legit. They have their backup quarterback playing. They're 4-1. He's won four games in a row. He's 5-0 and as a starter, and he's been fine, but it's because of that defense. They may have a top three defense in the league. I'd say them, San Fran, maybe Tampa Bay. They get after it. They got pass rushers out the building. They got Lawrence. They got Micah Parsons. Van Der Esch is a good linebacker. They got ball hawking corners like Trayvon Diggs. The Cowboys defense is legit. It'll make them a threat in the playoffs. Watch out for Dallas. My third biggest takeaway, Russell Wilson's career is at stake. He has looked terrible. Broncos country, let's ride. Broncos country is Broncos country is dead. There is no Broncos country. Russell Wilson looks terrible. The coach looks terrible. And his career is at stake. Listen, he's a great quarterback throughout his career. He's had a Hall of Fame career. But he's kind of at a tipping point right now. If he doesn't put it together this year, he might be washed up. He might be done. They gave him a seven-year contract. Spent five weeks. I'm going to hold out judgment. But he needs to get going or everyone's going to write him off. And his career is probably going to be over sooner rather than later. All right, let's get into the games. NFL Week 5, first game. Colts Broncos Thursday night football this was maybe the worst game of football I've ever seen in my life I feel bad for anyone who spent time watching this game I was gonna go see it with my friends thank god I went to bed at 8 30 instead this this game was terrible no touchdowns were scored in this game in 2022 an NFL game when offenses are thrown at fucking 50 yards every play 12 to 9 two disappointing teams both of these teams were picked by a lot of people to be in the Super Bowl they both have losing records Matt Ryan is the epitome of Boston College just a fucking pussy no balls he sucks he looks terrible he's a statue back there he's just waiting to get hit and like I said earlier Russell Wilson careers at stake he looks terrible and frankly I, I don't think I like Russell Wilson he says all the right things you know he looks he looks the right way I, I just get he's plastic you know he's like a Barbie doll he, ju he just doesn't feel real like have some be, be pissed off be mad you know it's it's okay you know I, I don't I don't like it I also don't like Matt Ryan and uh I don't like either of these teams and it was a terrible game and both of these fan bases should be really worried and disappointed Next game, we have Giants versus the Green Bay Packers. London game. Believe it or not, the Giants. Listen, the Giants are 4-1. and one. It's their best start since the 2009-2010 season. And they're looking good. The NFC East is looking like a good division. Saquon looks fresh. Uh, their defense looks a little better. Uh, I'm not willing to, you know, say they're a threat yet because they are the Giants and Daniel Jones is not a great quarterback. But I like what I've seen some day ball so far. And it looks like they're trending upwards. I think Giants fans should be optimistic about the future. As for the Packers, I think they should be pessimistic about the future because I think Aaron Rodgers doesn't want to play quarterback. He wants to go on podcasts and do mushrooms and date these actresses and the wide receivers, the rapport. He's, he's kind of an asshole like Aaron Rodgers. Like, I was watching a press conference with him today. He throws his defense under the bus, his wide receiver. He doesn't strike me as a leader of men. He strikes me as a it's about me guy. I don't. Th I think the Packers are pretenders. They'll probably make the playoffs. I, I don't think they're going anywhere this year. Lions-Patriots. Believe it or not, I got the zappy fever. Zappy, fe feed me zappy. You know, you know, my daily dose of zappy, you know, instead of um. No, Zappy, he, he looked all right. He looked, he looked for a third string. He looked okay. Not terrible, which is what all you needed because the Patriots defense came to play. They were playing the Lions, who before this game were the NFL's number one scoring offense. They held them to zero. Fucking donut. They got nothing. Jared Goff is Bill Belichick's bitch. Bill Belichick owns that ass. For in the Super Bowl, in this game, Jared Goff cannot get anything on Bill Belichick's defense. The Patriots defense looks good. It's a shame they don't have uh, Mac Jones is hurt because I think they could really start to get rolling here. And they still might because they have a lot of garbage coming up. The Patriots, the next couple weeks, they can string together a few wins. They might have an outside chance at making the playoffs. They got some real garbage teams coming up, so watch out for New England. As for Detroit, I mean, they're the same old Lions. They they suck. You you know three things. Death, taxes, and the Lions are going to be fucking terrible. And I, I'm never going to take the cheese on the Lions again until I literally see them, you know, have a good team, make the playoffs. They're one and four. They don't. Their defense is atrocious. Probably the worst in the NFL. Jared Goff is not a good quarterback. Lions are the Lions. Chargers-Browns. 
Uh, this game a little closer than probably should have been. A lot of people, the Chargers, they were down 14. Herbert was able to lead them back. You know, Austin Eckler, Gerald Everett, some of those guys, they were able to win because Chase McLaughlin, the uh, kicker for Cleveland, missed a field goal to win the game. Classic Cleveland. They can't get it done when they need to. Always choking. That's the one constant in that city. The Browns will probably never be good, even though they have Deshaun Watson. That's just another cursed franchise. They're an average team. They'll do average things. Probably be around 500 this year. As for the Chargers, they snuck one out, but their coach is still an idiot. First of all, should not have been as close. And they had a chance to put it away, and they went for it on fourth down, and they didn't get it, and they put Cleveland in a great position to come back and score again. Their coach, he, he just, he wants so bad just to be like this genius guru punt when you got a punt take the field goal take the points he cost him a playoff berth last year i think eventually he his he's gonna ruin his welcome there with the chargers i think they should move on get a new coach but they have a loaded roster so i think they'll be a playoff team but the coach is still an idiot Jets Dolphins. Poor Teddy Bridgewater. He had a chance to start this game, kind of get rolling for Miami. Uh, he got knocked out of the game early. They lost a third-string quarterback. Hard to, you know, judge the Dolphins and Jets when Miami's got their third-string quarterback playing, but I will. And I think the Jets might be a little better than we thought. Brees Hall looks legit. They have a two-headed backfield with him and Michael Carter. Zach Wilson doesn't look terrible. He, you know, he's put together some throws. They get a lot of weapons. Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, Corey Davis, Sauce Gardner looks legit on defense. Their first-round pick. The Jets might not be fucking awful. They might be an okay team, which for them is a big improvement. I think New York, the New York teams, Giants and Jets, be on the lookout. I don't think they're anything crazy, but they may be trending up, which is a change of what each team has been in the past five years. Steelers Bills. I mean, this was a raping. This was this was bad. This was bent over, non-consensual. Uh, the Bills fucked the Steelers. It was ugly. It was dirty. And I didn't feel good about it. And the Steelers shouldn't either. They look terrible. This looks like the, it's going to be the worst season the Steelers have in the Mike Tomlin era. He's never had a losing season. I think this season they're going to have a losing season. I think this season for them should be more about the development of Kenny Pickett because their O-line is probably the worst in the league. Najee Harris can't get anything going. Kenny Pickett has no time. They get TJ Watt hurt. Could be a lost season for Pittsburgh. Just let's see how Pickett does. I think that's more important for them this year. As for Buffalo, I said it earlier. Allen should be the MVP. McDermott's a good coach. They got weapons galore. Good defense. They should be the favorite. If Buffalo isn't in the AFC Championship game. It's a disappointment, and I think they should be the favorite to win the Super Bowl. St. Seahawks. Two garbage franchises, but not a terrible game. It was actually back and forth. You had Andy Dalton versus Geno Smith. If anyone, after five weeks of the NFL season, would have said to me, Geno Smith is going to be playing better football than Russell Wilson, I would have said, you're crazy. But that's that's what it is. Geno Smith, I think, going into this week, had the best completion percentage when he started quarterback in the league. He looked good again this game. Lockett's eating. Metcalf is eating. The offense for Seattle actually looks really good. They have one of the worst defenses in the league, and they just, you know, they just don't have what it takes this year. But they still have a lot of weapons. I think if they, you know, can put together a defense, you know, get an actual quarterback. Next couple years, they might. The rebuild might not be as long as we thought. As for the Saints, they won this game. They snuck it out, but it's been a disappointing year for them. I think they got a, another team needs a real quarterback. Jameis is just not the guy. All the receivers are hurt. The defense doesn't look as good as it should be. I mean, they got Honey Badger to get all these guys. Cameron Jordan, Demario Davis getting up 32 points to Seattle at home. That can't happen. Biggest takeaway, Geno is playing better than Russell Wilson right now. Probably the two worst franchises in the NFL, uh, other than Carolina, the Texans versus the Jaguars. This was a bad game by two bad teams, but the Jaguars got our set. A lot of people uh, thought the Jags were going to roll over the Texans because they were rolling, but Davis Mills said not so fast. Texans get their first win of the season. The rookie running back Pierce looks really good. Uh, Davis Mills looks okay. Not really much to take away from this game, other than, you know, we might need to pump the brakes on Jackson for a little bit. Even though they're trending in the right direction, I think they get some kinks to work out. They may not be there yet. Tampa, Atlanta. This is a game everyone's talking about. The Buccaneers were up 21-0. Atlanta came back, made it 21-15. The Bucs were able to hold them off and win the game, but the Bucs didn't look right. I mean, you can't let... Mar Marcus Mariota, he blows. He's washed up. They let him kind of come back, and frankly, the Falcons had a chance to win this game, and the refs gave him a fucking gift. Grady Jarrett got called for a roughing the passer on third down against Brady. And frankly, it was one of the worst calls I've ever seen in my entire life. Probably the worst call I've seen since the Saints-Rams NFC Championship game, the pass interference that wasn't called. This call was terrible. If this was roughing the pass, you could call it on any call. The Bucs got a gift. Atlanta had a chance to win this game. And 
even though it's Brady, it's my boy. It's a fucking shame. They called that because everyone who watched it knew it was a terrible call. The Bucs, they won this one. It still doesn't look right. Just because it's Tom Brady. If it was anyone else, I, I would, you know, say it's not their year. The first year with the Bucs, it took them week 10, week 12, late in the season to put it together. I don't want to say I'm not worried, but definitely not going to write them off, especially in that weak division, probably worst division in the league. Bucks don't look right, but, you know, they still got plenty of time. They still got Brady, so we'll see what happens. Bears Vikings. Believe it or not, Justin Fields didn't look totally awful this game. He just looked average. He actually made some decent throws. Uh, he's just not, I just don't think he's good enough as a passer. And I question whether he'll get there. The Vikings have looked good. They're 4-1. and one. Vikings won a close game. The defensive player stripped uh, the Bears receiver at the end. They got the win, snuck it out. Justin Jefferson looks like Maybe the best receiver in the league. He had 12 receptions yesterday. He's unbelievable. Finally got Cook going. The Vikings look good. Their problem, Kirk Cousins is the quarterback. It, it's funny. It's like it's an illusion because every time you see him play a, a team like this or last week, he looks great, makes all the right throws, great completion percentage, gets the ball to his guys. And then any time they play a real team on a big stage, he shits his pants like no one else. And for that reason, I can't buy in on Minnesota as a contender. I think they may win the division over at Green Bay, but there is no shot at Kirk Cousins. I can take him to the promised land. There's just no way. So that's what that is. Carson Wentz blows it. Uh, what a shocker. I mean, anyone could have saw this one coming. Close game between two meh teams. Commanders suck, frankly. The Titans or whatever. Commanders have a chance to win the game at the very end. Carson Wentz is in the red zone. Throws a terrible pick as time expires. Blows it for its team. Frankly, I think he's done. I think after the season with the Commanders, he'll be a backup. He's had three chances. He's blown one, two, three. He's blown them all. Each team he's taken over has gotten worse than the year before. He just can't get it done. And I think he has no balls, and I think he's mentally weak, and I think he should be out of the league by now. Titans, they may win the division by default. The Texans suck. The Colts look awful. The Jags may not be there yet. The Titans are so average. Ryan Co Tannehill is a definition of an average quarterback. They may win the division just by default, but they won't do anything. They're kind of in the in-between stage. They got a few guys, but not quite there. They should probably just rebuild at this point. But yeah, two math franchises. Yeah, who cares about this game? Niners, Carolina. Actually, on my way here, Matt Rule got fired uh, from the Carolina Panthers head coach. First uh, coach this year to get fired. He went 11 and 27 in three seasons as a head coach. He was terrible. They gave him a seven year contract. It's always risky when you get these coaches, hot shot coaches out of college. You think, oh, they're going to come in, you know, really, you know, put their stamp on the program. They always flame out. He's no different. He's like them all. Baker's awful. He's going to be a backup after this year. He's short. He's stumpy. He's cocky. No more commercials for Baker. He's done. We all knew that, though. The 49ers defense looks legit. I like San Fran as a contender this year. They're always kind of hanging around. Jimmy G looked pretty good yesterday. They got Debo. They got Ayuk. They have a good running game. They have a really good defense. If they can play mistake-free football in the playoffs, I really like San Fran to make some noise this year. I wouldn't be shocked if they made another deep run this season. Cardinals-Eagles. This one came down to the very end. Eagles went up 14-0. Cardinals came back. They had a chance to win it at, uh, tie it at the end, send it to overtime. They had a 43-yard field goal, and Matt and Amendola missed it. The fellow Paisan choked. Yeah, yeah, I hate to see it. You know, you hate to see another fellow countryman fail. Would have been nice if it was a Kowalski who missed a kick, you know, or, or maybe a Greek guy. You hate to see a fellow Paisan, but, you know, what can you do? He'll probably get cut, you know, poor guy. Just trying to, you know, feed his family. But what can you do? Eagles stay undefeated. They're 5-0. and Even though the Eagles have looked really good, they got Dallas on their heels. I'm really excited to see uh, when they, those two teams finally play. I think that'll tell you a lot about who's going to come out of that division. Uh, may come down to the end. Eagles look really good. Jalen Hurts is playing on another level. And the Cardinals, I think, are still front runners. And I fucking hate that franchise and that coach and that quarterback. Cowboys-Rams. Uh, the Rams got rammed in the ass by the Cowboys uh, yesterday afternoon. The Cowboys' defense looked unbelievable. Uh, Dexter Lawrence had a, um, or the, excuse me, Demarcus Lawrence had a kick off, uh, had a fumble return for a touchdown. Micah Parsons looked like an animal. Tony Pollard broke a big run. If they can protect, they can run the ball and play defense. They'll be in any game. They can play with anyone, especially when they get Dak back because then they can be dynamic on offense. I really like what I see from Dallas. Of course, that's another team that has no balls and chokes in the playoffs, but 
terms of the regular season. I like what I see from Dallas. Rams don't look right. It just doesn't look good. Call it what you want. Super Bowl hangover, injuries. I don't know. They can't run the ball. They can't protect Stafford. Stafford looks banged up. The defense is getting run through. It just doesn't look right. And that happens a lot with these teams that, you know, win the Super Bowl and, you know, you don't hear from them again. And I think that could be the case with the Rams. Matt Stafford, even though he got it done, I'm not, I'm not a big believer in him. I think it may have been more of a one-year thing. And I think week by week, it's looking more and more like that. So Rams, I'd be worried. Cowboys, excited. Bengals Ravens Sunday night football game of the week a lot of people thought this was going to be an absolute shootout you got two gunslingers and uh oh Joe Burrow gunslinger you know Lamar Jackson maybe the most electrifying player in the league but it was a close game low scoring and Burrow was able to lead a drive late give the Bengals a lead Lamar came right back did it with his legs Justin Tucker made some huge kicks and this is when the kicking game is really important because you have a you know a paisan like Matt Amendola who can't get it done in crunch time versus Justin Tucker who was the best kicker in the league. He made all his big kicks, 58-yarder, 43-yarder, game winner. And that was a difference for Baltimore. They won. I really liked both these AFC North teams as two playoff teams. I think they'll both get in. I think they'll both make some noise. I don't know if either is a Super Bowl team, but uh, both very dangerous. And if they can get rolling, I think they could maybe make a big run if things change. Uh, I just need to see some consistency from each team because it's, it's a little up and down. But, uh, you know, good game, two great quarterbacks. I kind of love this little uh, rivalry that's... uh. I think going to get going for the next couple of years. And that was the last game. That's all we got from this slate of NFL games. Uh, thank you for watching. Next week, we're going to come back. We're going to be watching Patriots Browns. We'll be checking in on Brady and the Bucks and his divorce. You know, we'll see, is Giselle impacting the play of the Bucks? Uh, we're going to be talking Eagles. We're going to be talking Cowboys. We'll be talking all the big games. You know how it is. Before you leave, like, subscribe, leave a comment. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you. Have a great day.